Hey guys, this is Hamza from MapChat, and in this video, we are going to learn a very famous third party networking library known as Alamofi. So, if you're not familiar with the how you can use a uh, third party library for getting JSON response data in Swift, and if you don't know the difference between uh, Apple's native framework known as URL sessions and the difference between URL session and Alamofi. This video is definitely for you. So yeah, let's get started. Alamofire is basically a hypertext transfer protocol network calling library. It is written on Swift and it is used for both iOS and macOS. But here is a question for newbies, what are network calls? So if we take a real life example, we have a real life example like uh, if we take an app that uh, basically retrieves data from a server or like when you update your social media status on Facebook or download files from any website in your system. Network requests are what actually make the magic happen. To help you with the requirements of network request, Apple also provides us a native way which is URL session. URL session is complete networking API for uploading and downloading content. But here's another question too, then why we should learn Almofire if we have a built-in native way? So the answer is Almofire and URL session both help us in making network requests in Swift. The URL session API is a part of the foundation framework whereas Almofire needs to be added as an external dependency. The advantage of using Alamofire is that there is a high level of abstraction so you can write very less lines of code and uh, to do interaction with the rest keywords like post, get, put, delete, etc. Furthermore, it is built to be asynchronous. See, what are asynchronous network calls? It basically keep the app responsive while that task is performing in the background. So we need this. So yeah, let's get started with a brand new Xcode project. I'm gonna create a new Xcode project, hit next, name it as Lamo Fire Test or maybe LM Test. Uh, looks shorter. Then click next and create. Now just uh, close the Xcode project because we don't need it right now and open the terminal <clears throat> and click the commands change directory drag and drop the folder of your project in order to get the uh, directory and click enter now I'm in my project folder what I'm going to do here is uh, I need a CocoaPod. I need to install it uh, sudo champ install CocoaPods. So what basically CocoaPods is, CocoaPods help us in downloading the third party libraries. It help us to integrate with our Xcode project. So you have to write this command sudo gem install coca ports but uh, i have already installed coca ports so i'm not going to download install it again so uh, if you want to check their version of coca port you have you can write sudo gem which coca ports write the password and as it shows that i have 2.3.0 1.5.3 coca pot version now what i'm going to do is here i'm going to initialize the part file within my project so for do that uh, i'm gonna write a part in it it will initialize the part file you can also recheck it using write command open dot it will open the current directory as you can see that uh, my part file is great successfully and uh, in order to check the version of part you can write part minus minus version 
it will give you the exact version of your coca pot as you can see 1.5.3 so let's open the pot file pot file it will open the pot file so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to write that i want alumma file parts to be downloaded in my project for doing that i'm just going to copy and paste a single line statement here it is but it's, it's defining that i need a part of alumma fire version 5.0 greater than it need to be installed in my project so make sure you download uh, make sure you write that uh, between target and end statement like uh, if you paste it over here maybe it will not work so keep in mind that just control save the file close close and i'll get back to the terminal and uh, install the updated file of part using pod install minus minus repo minus update this command will install elmofar in our project called enter so successfully install so now what i'm going to do is i'm gonna open my current directory and make sure that uh, you open xc workspace file not xc code project file because whenever we use Parts, we use XE workspace project file for running our app so go into the view control file I'm gonna import my framework using import uh, import alumma fire and for testing purpose I'm gonna write the parsing network call in my view little in my view little function because uh, we all know that as you are familiar with the swift view dot runs uh, whenever our apps uh, run on a first time so let's make our call over here uh, af dot request what af is af is short form of lmfr dot request dot request functions give us uh, uh, sending the request what I'm going to write here I'm gonna write here uh, URL so for testing purpose right now I have two API's we will test both of them so I'm gonna copy that and uh, paste it over here I know it will give me some errors just control X and comment that out so it will not give me some errors okay Cool. just paste it over here my API and uh, then I will write dot response response uh, okay dot response dot response completion handle for completion handle just click and I hit enter over here that in AF data response write uh, response keyword you can write any keyword if you like and write debug print debug print the response okay so working let's build that project and run on iPhone 8 I'm gonna run that project okay yeah so I got the request response in my console as you can see that uh, here's a response party which is returning me JSON data now uh, we successfully got the JSON data in our console and we can use them uh, further in populating table view cells but before doing that uh, I'm gonna teach you something else too which is mandatory I think which I think you should know too 
that as af dot request. Now I'm gonna use uh, another API control x dot response response. Okay, so when you write dot response, it gives you two methods: response JSON and response which uh, both of uh, both of them use a compilation handler so uh, I think you, sh uh, you should uh, be familiar with the both of the methods so first we use the response method now we are going to use a uh, response JSON method what it basically do it is exactly the same but uh, let me guide it first response and brand brand response all right so basically the main difference between a response and a response JSON is that when we use the response uh, function we have to write a uh, debug print we cannot uh, debug JSON values uh, using a print and we cannot get the values of JSON and uh, uh, console so we use debug print but uh, when we use response JSON keyword, we can get uh, the values in our console using print statement. So let me show you by running the project. It's very simple. I hope it run a little fast. I don't know why it's taking too much time. I'm 100% sure that it will run fast on your PC. It's just my computer system is very slow, I think. Alright, so we get the response. Okay. Okay, as you can see, this is our second API request. Uh, dot org slash get right over here, and we got their results. But uh, we are also getting first results, so that's the difference. And like, if you want to pass uh, some header, you can also do it through at the uh, headers. Uh, and if we if we had her, oh, okay, do the cancel this header, then dot accept. Uh, application slash JSON. What I'm writing here is, uh, as you can see, that I have a content type here as application slash JSON. So when when we use some complicated APIs, uh, where where we have some pass headers in our API, we did not get the results in uh, in our AF dot request statement. So we mentioned that uh, it also passed some header file too. Okay, it's giving me some header. What is that? Let header types are not written in the brackets of the elements. Okay, I missed that. Super stupid. And uh, I'm gonna pass that header here as header headers. Okay, cool. And that's it. You can also pass uh, body parameters here, which we will use uh, further when we talk about safety JSON. Uh, in the next video, we'll pass some body parameters here, like uh, when we have API 
example dot com slash uh, uh, post or slash uh, articles slash blogs so blog articles are basically the body parameters which we can pass uh, in the same way like we pass header uh, I'm gonna cover that in uh, the next video so one more thing I think I should mention that too uh, that is uh, a one second so right now we are using an API which confirms the security protocol of HTTPS uh, uh, HTTPS stands for hypertext transfer protocol secure secure so somehow if if you are testing an api which is on local host uh, which does not confront the security protocol of HTTPS, so when we use that uh, we got an error in xcode so in order to solve that uh, here's a simple trick which i'm going to mention but before going to do that i must show you what exactly an arrow looks like when we use uh, some HTTP type API calls okay yeah I got some errors here is app transport security has blocked our clear text uh, resource flow since, since it is insecure okay so for doing that uh, you can go to your info.plist file and open a source code and uh, just type the code uh, I'm going to tell you here it's a very small code just copy and paste just before the dictionary closing text what it's basically doing is uh, I'm I'm allowing allow the app transport security to accept uh, HTTP protocol URLs. So that's it. Uh, let's run it again, and you will definitely. okay see that did you see that we have we don't have any errors now so these are some very basic tips and tricks and uh, I'm going to sum up my tutorial for Alma fire uh, over here so if you do like the video please make sure you hit like and comment on also subscribe our video thank you Tell me pretty lies, look me in the face, tell me that you love me, even if it's fake.